A big warm welcome to Lainey and welcome to everybody to the Body Love Revolution Online Summit. Today, yes, I am joined by the beautiful Lainey. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about Lainey. After eight years in a corporate career as the youngest only female order fulfillment supervisor for an Australian non-for-profit government funded organization, Lane decided to leave her corporate identity behind and search for a fulfilling service-based career. Less than 12 months later, Lane is a certified global EFT practitioner and body acceptance coach with her own podcast based in Melbourne, Australia. Lane's mission is to support and liberate women as they unsubscribe from the diet culture and toxic body positivity through the somatic healing and emotional freedom technique, aka tapping and coaching work, allowing women to reclaim their bodies exactly as they are. Welcome, Lane. Thank you for having me, Emma. I'm so excited. I am so excited to have you. I had now, I just said to Lane before we got on, it's actually Lane, but I call her Laney. I've just nicknamed her. Um, and she's like that. <laughs> been very gracious and said, yes, I refer to you as Laney. So Laney was on my 21 Minutes of Morning Magic group and took us through EFT tapping. And Laney's going to explain a little bit more about how she helps women, particularly like we heard in, in your bio with that body acceptance piece, which is what the Body Love Re- Revolution Summit is all about. So Laney, tell me, what is emotional freedom technique? Thank you. Thank you for asking that question because a lot of the time we, you know, don't dive deep into what the actual process is. So uh, EFT is also known as emotional freedom techniques or also known as tapping. So if you hear myself or Emma using those terms, they're all interchangeable. And essentially it's, it's an alternative treatment to physical pain and emotional distress. And the way that I like to kind of give the analogy is if you could imagine yourself on a road trip and you come across a really breathtaking view and you want to get out of the car and you just want to soak it all in. That is the beautiful moment that we can kind of tap into when we start to use EFT and tapping. So if you could imagine that your body is that landscape of that road trip, sorry, Sorry. So if you can imagine that your body is kind of like that, that landscape of the road trip and, you know, you've got all of these highways that are running through your body and that is referred to as your energy system, or sometimes we refer to it as the meridian system. And what happens when we're feeling quite stressed or quite anxious, it's kind of like there's a bit of a traffic jam on those highways. And by gently tapping using EFT to tap on specific parts of the body, when we are feeling stressed or anxious, what we're actually doing is we're sending signals to the amygdala, which is the part of the brain that controls your stress response. And we're saying, hey, you know, it's all cool, calm and collected here. We want to, you know, continue this flow of traffic and we're telling our body essentially that we're safe. So this action really soothes the fight, flight, freeze or form response that we tend to have when we're feeling quite stressed. Now, a lot of the time it's not just tapping. We do also verbalize. We do talk throughout it because, again, if you can imagine yourself on a road trip, hopefully you're with a friend and you're not going to be completely silent on that road trip, are you? You guys are going to be like jamming out to a little bit of, I don't know, Destiny's Child. You're going to have a little bit of a laugh, a little bit of a sing-along. And that's exactly what talking through EFT is allowing us to do. It's allowing us to release those feelings. It's helping us change how we react to certain problems. And overall, EFT essentially is just trying to restore the balance to your body's energy at the end of the day. So that the next time that you're, you know, maybe you're dwelling on past experiences or you're anxious about the future, maybe your intensity around those feelings is going to decrease. Mm. So I hope that 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 explains it. Yeah, fabulous explanation. And like I mentioned, you were a guest in our 21 Minutes of Morning Magic group and you took us through an example of EFT. So the talking part, when you say, so yes, it's 
certain parts of the body that you tap, which is very soothing, you know, speaking Mm -hmm. from someone on the receiving end, when you did it with me, the receiving end, very soothing. And then the talking part, Mm -hmm. how does that work with the EFT? So what would be an example of something we would say while we're doing the tapping, what is the talking piece in it? So essentially, I mean, you definitely can use EFT without doing the talking element of it because there are some people that, you know, can't exactly put into words the emotional intensity that they've felt about maybe a particular trauma or something's happened to them in the past. And so we replay that scene kind of like like a silent movie with them, right? So we're just tapping along with them. We're not talking, but that person's intention is to focus on whatever the issue is for them. And when we're actually implementing the talking, which is a great uh, element or component that's going to have more beneficial outcomes for you. You uh, essentially, you're starting off with a, a setup statement and you're acknowledging exactly how you feel. And sometimes we tend to use what's called a SUDS rating, which is the uh, subjective units of distress monitor. So just a rating between one to 10. So you say, I'm feeling really angry right now and I'm at about an eight. And I, um, I'm feeling really angry right now. I'm about an eight and I can feel it somewhere in my body, but I deeply and completely accept and respect myself anyway, or I honor myself anyway, or if you're at that stage in your life, I completely love and accept myself anyway. And by doing that, we acknowledge that this is how we feel. We're honoring that emotion, but we're also saying at the end of it, I still respect who I am. I still accept who I am. I'm still worthy. I'm still loved. And then we move through the uh, eight touch points of the tapping. And those uh, affirmations can vary. So we're starting off at, you know, this level of anger that's at an eight. We do some tapping. We reassess where we're at. Maybe it's increased. Maybe we're at a nine. We're even more angry now because we've been focusing on, on that emotion Maybe it's gone down. Maybe the intensity has shifted a little bit or maybe it's staying at the same. And no matter what the number is, it's all okay. Our aim and objective is to obviously bring that number down to a place where you're feeling a lot more calm uh, and probably less reactive in how you want to respond to the situation that you're tapping on. When I experience tapping with you, Lainey, that would be the thing that I really appreciate about this modality is the setup statement you're owning how you feel and then from that place there still is that reinforcement that you still love and accept yourself even though you're feeling that emotion Mm -hmm. and for me when I experienced it it definitely does help dissolve the the intensity of that emotion and that was my experience and I feel that tapping particularly around body acceptance and when you're talking through it then I was thinking how it could be used in a practical way mm-hmm. I know that from time to time I've gone shopping and for clothes yeah. and on this body acceptance journey I can either, the shopping trip can start out great if I choose an outfit or find something that fits me and I like. However, if I don't, I can become upset, sad, irritated, down on myself and want to go home. So Mm -hmm. I can see just when you're talking through that, I was thinking that's where tapping could be really helpful to move through that emotion because that acceptance of oneself And, you know, there's many things that we could put in as your statement, but I think it's, it's that set up statement only actually how I feel when that happens Mm -hmm. and then still accepting myself as I am. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, as I touched on a little bit earlier in my road trip kind of analogy, we're restoring that balance to your body's energy. So, you know, the next time that you do go shopping, that, intensity that you feel uh, when clothes don't fit you or you're not feeling super comfortable hopefully you know it's at a a 
point where maybe if you did some tapping a little bit beforehand, or if you knew that you were going into the shops and, you know, in a change room, can we call you're all by yourself, right? You've got that privacy to maybe do a little bit of tapping beforehand um, to a point where hopefully you're going to have a less reactive response to how you feel when you try on those clothes, right? So if you're, for example, someone uh, who you know, walks past a mirror and you see your reflection and you go, oh, gross. And that's your first reaction to yourself. You know, maybe after a few rounds of tapping, maybe after a few more, who knows, you might still feel that twinge of discomfort when you're looking at yourself in the mirror. But hopefully it's now at a point where you can actually pause take a moment, reflect a little bit and be like, you know what, even though I'm not feeling like a hot bitch right now, I am still completely worthy. Perhaps you're someone who gets caught up in scrolling on Instagram constantly and you're comparing yourself, which is a huge thing. Um, And, you know, you're comparing yourself to all these gorgeous influences. You're feeling less and less confident every single time that you scroll, scroll through and you're seeing these beautiful skinny people. Maybe after a session or two of EFT, you start to notice when you're scrolling, you start to notice when you are comparing yourself. And rather than scrolling right past, again, you take a moment, you go, you know what? I'm going to actually go onto that account. I'm going to unfollow them because I know that when I see that stuff, it doesn't make me feel like I want to feel. And that's the power of EFT. It doesn't mean that you're never going to have a bad body image day ever again, because that's just not not realistic. Um, But it does mean that you'll understand that it's okay to have those feelings. Yes. And is that how you work with clients, Lainey? You know, those examples of the shopping and the scrolling, which I just love, that is such a great example, because I believe that's potentially happening daily to a lot of us. Yes. Is that the way you mostly work with your clients around EFT? Are there other areas, because I know that you um, have got a great view on the toxicity of diet culture, does it also help with that area as well? Yeah, I just think that um, a lot of the time women, we tend to put our results on things that are within ourselves. Like we didn't try hard enough, right? I'm too lazy. I didn't apply myself enough. I just, I failed this diet because I'm not worthy enough to lose weight or, you know, I just didn't, again, didn't try hard enough. And it's always seems to be this like internal thing. But I think one of the key things, especially throughout my coaching is helping women understand that there are so many external barriers that are outside of ourselves that contribute to how the internal world feels, right? Mm -hmm. There are so many external systems that are put into place that keep women so small. Mm -hmm. There's the patriarchy, there's ableism, there's racism, there is the psychology of food that comes into play. You know, there's marketing and social media. There are so many things that keep messaging us women over and over again that, hey, you need to be smaller, you need to be prettier, you need to be whiter, and God forbid, please don't age because no one likes an old lady. You know, there are so many things, so many messages that are consistently being thrown at us and we seem to think that it's our fault that we are like this and it's just not the case. Yes, the work is so internal. It's our responsibility to make that change, but it's also our responsibility to discern these messages and look around and be like, well, that's actually telling me that I need to be thinner, but why do I need to be thinner? Is it because I'm not happy with myself or is it because I want to be healthy? Like unpacking the reasons why I'm being targeted for these messagings is really, really important and something that I don't think a lot of women tend to think about when they're on this kind of journey. Everyone thinks it's so internal. Got to remember, there's a big, bigger game plan (laughs) at play for us. Mm -hmm. Because it does feel like that, Lenny, you know, particularly when you start to, you know, particularly this body love revolution, like eyes up, ears up. And then noticing this constant subliminal messaging that is being put to us, and sometimes in some very sneaky ways. Oh, so sneaky. So sneaky. And I remember you pointing out to me, which I just loved, that you pointed out, and I just love this, Lainey, the size of the personal care aisle 
in our supermarkets as opposed to the men's section. Yeah. So different, isn't it? So (laughs) completely different. And until you brought that to my attention, I had not noticed that. And now Mm. I do. And that in itself, that subliminal messaging, we then have to walk past Mm -hmm. an aisle and a half as opposed to a man has half of an aisle with all of that messaging saying you need to wax, you need to cream, you need to make up, you need to color <laughs> hair, you need to fluff, yep. you need to puff, you need to, you know, all yeah. of that. <laughs> I love that. The fluff and then the puffing. <laughs> <laughs> and we we have never, well, I mean, thankfully, beautiful, beautiful people like you who have brought that to my attention. Thank you. Just that mindfulness as I enter into that aisle, the mindfulness of that saying, hang on a moment, I can see that I'm having to travel past this, but you do not need to buy this Mm. or do that. You're Mm. okay. Yeah. And the other thing too about that is that even if you do want to, that's okay as well. It comes down to the power of choice, right? Like there was a period in in my life where I decided that I wasn't going to shave my body anymore. I was not go- I was not going to do it. It takes up so much of my time. I really can't be asked. Men don't have to do it. My partner who I've been with for ten years he doesn't care if I've shaved or not. He still loves me regardless. And I went you know about two years of not shaving. And I remember some of the comments that I got from from people who I thought were my friends. And, you know, at that point in my, my life, I was like, you know what, that's okay. That's their opinion. I don't really care. I'm, you know, bigger picture person. But then it did get to a point where I felt like, you know what, I don't feel so comfortable having my armpits as hairy as they were. So I decided to shave them and that's a-okay as well. It comes down again to the power of choice about my body, right? Mm-hmm. And about your body and how you want to look. The, the The fine line between all that is, are you strong willed enough and resilient enough to be okay with the judgments and the criticisms that do come along with it. Mm. Are you? Don't know. I think you're just a bit of an inner rebel, Lainey, and I love that. Oh. I love <laughs> allowing the inner rebel. Because when you were yeah. talking through that, I thought I have never had let my inner rebel express herself in that way. And I actually don't know if I do or don't like the feeling of hair because I've never allowed it to come out. Yeah. And that's the thing. A lot of us haven't haven't had haven't had the even the time to sit back and actually go inward and again ask the question, why? Why do I shave my body? Yes. Why? <laughs> wow. And again, why, 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 why? Being discerning is very, very empowering. And you might come to the realization that, hey. I still want to shave my body and that's okay. And you might turn the other way and be like, I don't want to. And that's okay as well. Yeah. (laughs) Or like you did for two years, you didn't. And then you do. Yeah. But I I love the idea of actually feeling into that Mm -hmm. and knowing what that feels like, because that's the other part of this body acceptance. My own journey here, speaking of, is the numbing out, Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. absolute numbing out. Mm -hmm. So not even questioning what it feels like to be this or that in my body. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's almost back to that somatic feeling and and think of the EFT tapping, actually feeling, feeling in your body. Mm -hmm. And EFT, again, is a really great tool to unpack that. You know, if you just continually ask yourself, why, 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 why do I feel like this about this? Why do I feel like this about that? What's the best decision for myself? your body will respond and it will give you an answer. And it doesn't mean that's going to be the answer forever. You know, you might come back in six months time and tap again on something that's similarly related. And you might have a different answer because you're at a different place in your life. You're a different person. You've learned new things. And Mm -hmm. that is a really beautiful thing about tapping. It can be used for just about anything, (laughs) anything, which is great. There's a lot of freedom in that. There questioning is. yourself and freeing out those emotions or I like to say you know, my journey of body acceptance the word that I would say that I feel now particularly this summer how I felt in my body in my swimmers because it's summer right now and this is quite prevalent for me is freedom mm-hmm. there's yeah. a sense of freedom mm-hmm. 
in body acceptance. Yeah. Yeah. And that is refreshing. Mm, Oh, absolutely. I used to have clients that would talk about that, that piece about feeling comfortable in a swimsuit. Right. And I used to always ask them, what did your boss wear to work yesterday? And they'd be like, I, I don't remember. I'm like, well, <laughs> no one's going to remember what you're wearing today. When you step out onto that beach, if that gives you a sense of confidence that no one's going to remember what you're, what you are wearing tomorrow, is that empowering enough for you to step out and dress the way that you want to dress? But- yeah. This great point. Now I do want to ask, when was the last time you felt comfortable or confident in your own body? Or when did you last have a bad body image day. Can you tell us about your body acceptance journey, Lainey? Oh, absolutely. I think for for myself, I grew up in how do I how do I explain it? I don't I'm definitely not putting my mum down because she's a beautiful human being, but we are the complete opposite, right? She is this five foot nothing, blonde hair, brown eyes, beautiful like little petite girl. Uh, I shouldn't call her a girl because she, she's my mum. But, <laughs> you know, she had this six foot dark haired, blue eyed daughter, and we look absolutely nothing alike. And growing up, it was very hard for me because everyone would be like, oh my God, your mum, she's so beautiful. She looks so good for her age. She looks, and because I was the complete polar opposite of that, I was like, oh, well, if she's the epitome of beauty and I'm the complete opposite of that. I must be unattractive. I must be ugly. I must be. And that was the messaging I was telling myself. It never, ever came from my mum like that. My mum was so uplifting with my height. She encouraged me to wear high heels, you know, and I loved that, that I was, you know, 18 years old going out to clubs in being six foot and confident enough to still wear high heels. I'm with a partner who is, he's a lot shorter than I am, but he encourages me to wear high heels as well. And so I really, really love that the people I have surrounded myself with are very appreciative of the way that I want to dress and the way that I feel about my body. But it isn't always like that. You know, I go through periods, especially through high school where I was like in my emo phase where I just wear all black. And that was what I was like destined to wear. Apparently everyone, whenever they saw me in any kind of color other than black, they thought it was very odd. And for me, that became a kind of identity, right? And I clung to that. And it got to a point where those clothes weren't making me very happy. I wanted to express myself in different ways. I wanted to incorporate more color, but that also meant that their reactions to me were going to be different. And was I ready to handle that? I wasn't quite sure at that stage in my life, but now I'm at a place where I'm more comfortable to have that freedom of expression, try things, see if I feel comfortable and not care about the reactions that I'm going to receive because I'm confident within myself Mm -hmm. to be like, Hey, I love wearing glasses and big earrings and singlets, even though I'm a big girl, I like wearing high heels, even though I'm six foot. Uh, But that takes a lot of, uh, takes a lot of self-confidence and self-confidence can be learned. A lot of people think that you're kind of just born confident not the case. You can totally learn how to be more confident. And that's just what I've been doing slowly over time, especially over the last few years. So today is a great body image day for me personally, because it's the first day in about a week's time where I've been able to put on clothes that I actually really like to wear that are bright and bold and colorful. I've been sick this past week. So I've been in trackies and hoodies and in bed. Uh, So today has been a great body image day for me. And, but it's, again, I know that it's not going to be, might not, not, might not be like this tomorrow, right? Yeah. And it is like that, isn't it, Lainey? You're absolutely right. It's, it is a learnt, confident is learnt mm. and it is practised and it's wonderful when you do have people that you surround yourself that encourage it and commend your confidence. Would you say absolutely. EFT tapping has been a big part of you growing your confidence? Absolutely. I definitely would um put EFT tapping into that category and also just surrounding myself with people that I aspire to be like as well that also reflect uh, the type of person that I want to be, right? And um, 
yeah, I'm just very, very grateful to have the the opportunity to be surrounded by those kinds of people because sometimes it can be very hard. I'm in my personal life, I'm very much surrounded by um, stereotypical. Uh, I don't, well, I don't want to say the word stereotypical women, but in terms of you know white picket fence, got the kids happy to, um, you know, be married, all of that amazing stuff, which I really commend, but that's just not the type of woman that I personally want to be. So being able to find online communities such as yours, such as uh, Anna Rose's Self Love School um, and a whole bunch of other amazing women that are out there that are giving us the opportunity to step away from that identity of just kind of same, same and be more self <laughs> Same self? I don't know. I don't know. We've got to coin a term, Emma, and figure yes. out something there to trade for. <laughs> Just being your own individual identity that's not attached to that, again, stereotypical messaging of, of being a woman, right? And that's back to the beauty standards, isn't it, Lainey? Mm. We have been shown in the Western world what a white woman should, I'm going to use the word should look like, and yeah. conduct herself. And yeah. and that does not have hairy legs or hairy armpits. No, no, she does not. <laughs> <laughs> so even that being able to show up in a different body, way, shape. And I and I do believe, I really do believe we're moving in the right direction. Purely the example you used before about, you know, when we go onto social media, we actually can now curate our feed, which is a yeah. wonderful thing. And then mm -hmm. following women who are in a mid-sized body. Yeah. Someone in a larger size body to see that everyone has their own unique beauty and their own unique style mm -hmm. and feeling it's okay to show up as we are not like we've been yeah. fed in our Western world, which is our typical, what would we even say, like housewives of... <laughs> I know, no, I don't, no. I, I tend to say the beige brigade, <laughs> it's, yeah. you know, yeah. it, it's your beiges, it's your linens, it's your, you know, Sunday market picnic basket kind of vibes, which is Active all good. Way. If, <laughs> yes. If that's the type of woman that you want to be, I am all for it. Get out there, girlfriend, go for it. But just don't hold it against other women who just don't want that. And that's, yes. that's it. Yeah. Yes, yes, that is exactly right. There is room and space for expression of creativity and mm -hmm. hairiness and ageing and grey hair and all kinds of yes. different expression. I agree, mm -hmm. Lenny, and I, I hope that the Body Love Revolution Online Summit is definitely an expression of that because we have got incredible guests like yourself and others that are not part of the beige parade, which <laughs> beige that's, that's, a, that's a tongue twister. <laughs> but is and like you say, not not the way. And there's nothing wrong with that. Everyone no. can be fully expressed. You? Mm. But it, but like you say, just don't put down other people who want to uh, express experiment. Themselves. Yeah, Experiment. and if you, that's probably the one thing that I felt growing up in my my childhood because my mum and I were so polar opposite. I often felt like I was not living up to her kind of ideals of, of a firstborn daughter, right? I didn't want to wear dresses. I didn't want to play netball. I didn't want to do, you know, all of this this stuff that seemed very stereotypical for, for young girls. And that did strain our relationship. And that's the thing. If you're a mother and you have a daughter that's, you know, a little bit quirky, a little bit different, you know, embrace that. Allow them to be the most freest expression of themselves because they're going to just love on you so hard for that, for not giving them that kind of, repression that that just is unwarranted at the end of the day yeah and then they go out and get to change the world in their own way yes by being absolutely they do themselves mm -hmm. wonderful now Lenny have you got any resources that we can that you could recommend or you could share with anyone who's listening who would love to work with you or see uh, how EFT could support them in their body loved acceptance journey what have you got yeah absolutely so in terms of resources that are outside of myself I've got this beautiful book that really helped me with my uh, I guess liberation process and freeing myself from diet culture so it's called your weight is not the problem by Lindy Cohen um, and that is just 
an amazing an, an amazing book um in terms of you know combining EFT and the body acceptance space I haven't seen anyone in this kind of um I don't want to say niche, but yeah, like niche. And that's what I want to change. And that's what I want to be a part of. And so if you are interested on working on your body acceptance journey with the combination of EFT, I'm your gal um, here anytime. Uh, And yeah, I I hope that that book resonates. Um, There's also, you know, so many other resources in terms of podcasts that are out there. I have a podcast myself, which is called Wait, There's More, where we talk about those systems that we, Emma and I were chatting about earlier, those, those systems that oppress women. We kind of dive into them and break them down a little bit and give you um, some actionable tools with some great expert speakers on different kind of areas of the body acceptance journey, which I'm very, very proud of. Mm, wonderful, Lainey. Yes, wait, there's more. Your podcast is fabulous and you have some great guest speakers as well as your mm-hmm. own solo podcast. So I'll be sharing that with everyone. So definitely listen to that. And thanks for referring that book too. Great mm-hmm. for someone to start. Your weight is not the problem. Great place to start reading a book. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, people can work with you one-on-one. And I know you do have a group program that comes up from time to time through the year. So I'll have all your details there. And for those of you who are listening, please go and follow Lainey. She mm-hmm. and on Instagram, your EFT.lane. So nice. that that'll all be in the um uh, in the notes here anyway. But Lainey, I want to say thank you so much for your thank time. you. I have absolutely fun. loved our chat. I mean, you always have this wealth of knowledge and that beautiful part, that little inner rebel in you, which is pushing the boundaries <laughs> and, you know, being fully expressed is such a beautiful gift to women. So thank, thank you. you so much, Emma. That's beautiful. And I cannot wait to see the rest of the guest speakers. I'm so pumped for the Body Love Summit. And I think that you obviously do incredible work and we're so aligned. And I just love finding that and finding, finding like-minded people. It's a beautiful thing. Thank you, Lainey. Thanks so much. Thank you.